My brother shares with me. He gives a shear a class every week, Wednesday night in Manhattan. For many decades. Mostly secular Jews. Some time ago, a man walks into the class. Sits down. My brother sees immediately that his motor skills are compromised. When he opens his mouth... He notices that he has a serious speech impediment. He then notices that it's hard for him to function independently. And when they have a chat, the man shares with him a devastating story. He was born with a neurological disease. The doctors told his parents in the hospital that he will never be able to function independently normally. And they said, if that's the case, we don't know what we're going to do because they were wealthy Manhattan Jews social butterflies they were always going from one reception to another reception to another dinner you know they were that types of activists they were always going to events in this hotel that hotel and to have a disabled child a handicap a crippled child was not part of their plan wasn't the game plan so the doctor said if so you should give up the child and they put the child into an institution from birth and they never met him again and the boy tells my brother he's 30 years old he never ever saw his father and mother, although they both live in Manhattan. Every month, his father sends him a very handsome check. So he has all of his needs met. He has some jobs to keep him busy. He's taken care of in the institution, but he never met his parents. They never wanted to create the emotional bond. My brother felt broken from the story. He took a telephone, unconventionally. He called up the father, and he says... I know this is not a usual telephone call. I've met your son. I want to tell you a soul so spiritual and sensitive I have not met in my life. Physically handicapped. Serious limitations and impediments. But it will be a privilege to meet him. And a second later my brother hears, Trach boom. He hoped it was the operator. He phones back. The man says, you didn't get the message? Mix out of my life. Boom. What do you do? It was hard enough to make the call. You know, the butterflies in the heart, in the stomach when you got to make such a call. And now, the man hang up, hung up on him. He waited a few months. And he called the mother. Ayida Shemame is Ayida Shemame. And he introduces himself and he says why he's calling. I think you should meet your son. She starts crying and she said, we're not about to revisit a decision we made 30 years ago. Leave it alone. My brother starts reasoning with her. He says this. He says, I really can't understand you. There are children who are orphans. They never had a father or a mother. Or one died young or both died. And their whole life, they wonder, what would have it been like to have my father and mother? Who was my father and mother? Anybody they meet who says, I knew your mother, I knew your father, they tell me, tell me about him. Show me a picture. Tell me about his personality. Their whole life they wonder about their parents. Children who were adopted sometimes search for their entire life to meet their biological parents, to find out the secret of their own shalshelas, their own existence, their own dynasty. Here... Your son has two parents alive 10 minutes away in Manhattan, in the city of New York. How can you deprive your child from knowing and meeting his parents once in his life? What is he asking for? He's not asking to move into your home. He's not asking for you to move into his home. He's not asking for extra support. He wants to meet his parents. Why not? She says, you got to talk to my husband. Next week, he calls the husband, and he makes the same case. I have to give my brother credit. He was persistent. And the man says, let me think about it. Well, a week later, okay, we'll see him if you come along. I guess he wanted a buffer zone for some, you know, protection. The next Sunday, my brother and this boy come to their penthouse, looking over Central Park in New York City in Manhattan. My brother tells me it was beyond stunning. This guy was obviously quite affluent and well-to-do. They walk into this penthouse. It's huge, beautiful, stunning view of the skyline of New York City. 
Nobody's eyes meet each other. Nobody. They sit down at the table. There's some pieces of chocolate and candies on the table. And what do you talk Sunday afternoon when you meet somebody? You talk about the weather. Right? I know today's weather in London was something I brought from New York. You talk about the weather. By us, you talk Sunday afternoon. You talk about Trump. You talk about Hillary. You talk about Sanders. You talk about Obama if you're really bored. It's Sunday afternoon. You do some Sunday football. Whatever Minig America is. I'm sure Britain has its own Sunday afternoon conversations. So that's what they're talking about. For 10 minutes, they're talking about the weather. My brother stops the conversation. He says, listen, we could talk about the weather for a long time now. We're not here for that. And he breaks the silence and cuts the tension a little bit and says, here's the deal. The reason we're here is I have met your son some time ago. I felt that he is such a profound human being, such a worked out soul, such a deep thinker. And I thought it would be a privilege for his parents to see who their boy is and for the boy to meet his parents. That's why we're here. Silence. The boy opens up his mouth first and he looks at his father and mother and I quote him verbatim the way my brother told me. The boy says these words. He couldn't say a patach. So he couldn't say daddy or mommy or papa or mama. He could only say a kumitz. So he says papa, mama instead of pop, mom. Papa, mama. And these are his words. Papa, mama. I am not perfect, as you know. I have not been perfect from birth, as you know. But so are you. Papa and Mama, you're also not perfect. I have forgiven you for your imperfections. I hope one day you will be able to forgive me for my imperfections. I have forgiven you for being imperfect. I hope one day you'll forgive me for being imperfect. Quiet. The mother broke down sobbing. She went over to her son and embraced him for like 10 minutes. The father followed suit. My brother told me at that moment I felt like a shatchen after the chuppah. You did your job. Now it's time to say Baruch Shepetrani on yourself and leave. Shatchin goes out with a paycheck. I'm not sure my brother went home with a paycheck, but he excused himself and he says, I think it's time for me to leave. And the family was reunited that day. And I thought to myself, let's be honest. Have you forgiven your children for their imperfections? Have you forgiven yourself for your imperfections? Can we forgive our loved ones for being imperfect? Can we embrace who they really are, not who we thought they're going to be? Can we make space for what Hashem wants from them, not necessarily what we want from them? Can we appreciate the fact that they illuminate the world and what is not included in every moment, every act could become part of by revealing in every nukuda of life can I embrace my child for real or can I only embrace my version of my child 